Hello, how are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. Happy um, halfway through August now. Wow, can't believe that. How are you guys doing? I'll wait for a few of you to get here. <laughs> I'm Sarah Mee and um, this is So So Life and we usually cut something out today. Usually a couple things um, during August because I'm celebrating my one year streaming anniversary this month. All month long we're, str we're uh, streaming more. Hi Malin, how's it going? And just so you know, um, I stream live on Twitch and YouTube um, at the same time. So it does look like I'm talking to imaginary people sometimes, but I promise I'm not. How is it going, Malin? <laughs> hi, Ida. Hi, Gina. I'm so glad you remember, Gina. You can, um, on, you're on YouTube, yeah. So um, you can click the little icon that looks like a bell, and it'll allow notifications, and it'll just pop up on your phone. But um, I'd be careful doing that if you're following a lot of people because it can kind of blow up your phone sometimes. So hi, Veronica. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Megan. Ooh. Megan found um, Swedish tracing paper for 20 bucks for 10 meters on Amazon. That's pretty good. That's over, you know, it's a little less than 10 yards. Hi, Derek. Hello from California. <laughs> I love Scotland. I've been there a bunch of times. Hi, Katie. How's it going? I popped your package in the mail today, Katie and Gina. Gina is the winner of the giveaway, you guys. So it's awesome. Both winners are here. Hi, Carol. How's it going? Hi, Olivia. <laughs> See you on Twitch there. All right. So uh, this week, um, I feel like I'm tackling a bunch of things you guys have really wanted or really like um, talking about. So I'm going to be cutting out some knits today and we're doing the legendary Moneta dress by Colette Patterns and we are cutting and sewing the Linden sweatshirt by Green Line Studio. And um, at the end of the week, I'm gonna do pattern drafting stream. So I posted a schedule on Instagram and so today is cutting, uh, today's Tuesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday and Thursday we're sewing. So Wednesday sewing Moneta. Um, Thursday sewing the Linden sweatshirt. Friday we're gonna do pattern drafting and Saturday we're gonna do pattern drafting. That way I don't have to switch my setups between the uh, table. Really I should have done pattern drafting tomorrow and the next day because it's over here. But um, at the same time, it's always good to just sew right afterwards. <laughs> I love all the congratulations there. Hi Elaine, how's it going? Are you guys sewing, any of you? What are you guys doing? Olivia says congratulations to you guys as well. She's on Twitch. I need to clean my glasses. That's the one thing I didn't do today, do yet. And um, I just need to, you know what I mean? <laughs> I had a little snack before instead. Usually I like to have um, like my second cup of coffee here at work, like iced and um, I can't help it. I just like a treat with my coffee in the morning, like the second one. I knew I didn't have a treat here, so it would be really frustrating to have a coffee, so I didn't do it. But that is usually like the snack that kind of gets me through the stream, too. Oh my god. My glasses, you guys, are hopeless right now. A, they're turning pink. Can you guys see that? They're turning pink. And it's because I use purple shampoo sometimes. So the, it's like, I don't know why my hair's not purple. But my glasses are turning pink. Plus they're, they're just really scratched up right now. Um, and they grab my hair. Ugh, it's just awful. And I feel like I just need a new prescription anyway. You're at work, Olivia, but you cutting, you've been cutting out a quilted table runner from Chicken Boots Harry Potter fabric. Oh my God, that's awesome. A table runner in um, in my Harry Potter fabric leftovers. That's awesome. You're gonna make the toaster sweater, but you don't have enough fabric. Ooh, have you laid it out, Megan? I feel like um, I'm gonna have a lot of extra fabric. I was just looking at it, so. Really, Veronica, that's awesome. You've been sewing a long time. I don't think I've been sewing that long. Let's see. I think I, st I think I started sewing when I was about, I want to say about 14. So more like 30 plus years. 
Bam. You're cuddling your baby and knitting, Dina. Awesome. Planning your sewing projects, right? That was the hardest adjustment for me was like dialing back what I thought I could get done in a day. Because I, I that, that didn't sit well with me. That was my struggle. Right, Ida, I know. I know why well, I eat breakfast. I eat, always eat breakfast. I have coffee and breakfast. And then I make a second cup as I go out the door, just ice because it's so hot here. And then I always have like a little chocolate biscuit or something here at work nobody knows about. So you're knitting today, Malin. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen that, that cardigan. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Carrie. I want to call you Carrie, but you're Karen. This is because it says K.E. Ridley. Oh, you're getting your car serviced right now. I had the tree trimmers come today for an estimate. We got to do that stuff, you know. You were nine when you started, Veronica. That's awesome. See, I didn't want to learn. Yeah. Oh, you're, I, you know, the scout tee. I'm kind of excited about that. Oh, you're, gonna, you're doing the grain line uniform tunic? That's what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the uniform tunic right now. It's really comfortable. I cut mine on the bias, um, so it feels, sometimes I feel it, you know, because the bias is like stretching funny, but I just love these pockets right here. I love that they're in the front. Everything like in my pockets hides under my belly. <laughs> oh, well, you have more time now, Veronica. That's awesome. So, okay. Um, hi, Eileen. How's it going? You're doing your winding of the yarn, Brooke. I know. I always picture you doing that. Fans going and stuff. Um... So it was really awesome reading all of your sewing journey stories and um, seeing how you came to sewing or funny little stories about it. And um, I, I saw a couple of you came to it by sewing Barbie clothes. Um, I didn't have a Barbie. I didn't really like dolls when I was a kid. But I've heard that from so many people over the years that they started sewing clothes for their Barbie. Um, and I didn't want to learn how to sew. I, I thought that was really interesting is that I realized after reading all of your guys' stories that mine is so weird because I, I really did not want to learn how to sew. I was a little bit sexist about it and I was just like, that's a girly thing to do. I don't want to do a girly thing. And there just was no other electives in high school. And they tried putting me in it twice and the second time I had to stay. And then I was like, wow, I really love the engineering side of this. And that's what really appealed to me. But... I did as a kid make clothes for a stuffed animal of mine. Do you, you guys know Snoopy, right? Did you guys know Snoopy had a girlfriend named Belle? <laughs> like I could care less about Snoopy's girlfriend, Belle, but I made her clothes and you know, twisty ties like on your bread bags and things like that. That's how I would hold them together on her. I didn't sew them. I used twisty ties to hold the pieces of fabric I would cut out and put on her. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. And I did that when I was pretty young. I like stuffed animals, so. Oh, that's awesome, Eileen. You, you got it because of me? That's a cr incredible. I'm kind of surprised. My uniform tunic looks so different than a lot of the others, and I really love all the ones done in linen. But I really I really like this floral, floral fabric, which looks better in person, by the way. <laughs> so. Ah, oh, Malin, right? What does your mom do, Megan? And now your daughter does that. I don't know. I missed, I'm just like trying to keep up with you guys, the chat. Ooh, I, I love knitting swatches, Ida. It, I feel like it's an underrated part of the creative process of knitting. Yeah. Yeah, Snoopy had a girlfriend, Belle. Snoopy was kind of a big deal, I think a bigger deal in California. There's actually, um, like you can go to like a Snoopy, um, like well, Charles Schultz, um, museum in like Santa Rosa, I think, or Petaluma. And there's all kinds of miniatures of the um, Snoopy characters all around town in different spots. It's pretty cute. But um, also like, I think when we lived in the high desert when I was a kid, um, his like, his like cousin who lived in Needles, which is actually a real place in the desert, kind of came about and my parents thought that was pretty funny. So I know, right, Katie? I, it's so it's so terrible. It's in Santa Rosa, yeah, exactly, Brooke. I'm surprised I got that right. Yeah, I you know I um I liked Snoopy as a kid, but the cartoons always made me really sleepy. They were a little slow for me. <laughs> I like action. <laughs> they should have had anime then that I could see. <laughs> I actually did like things that I now know were anime. So I don't watch anime now, but. 
Oh, I used to go to school with those kids in Santa Rosa, Polly. That's awesome. Yeah, right? Right? I remember, um, do you guys remember the um, cartoon? So it was like a, it was like a movie of the, I just remembered that the little boy, I think he went off to school or something. And then there was like a sign that was like, no dogs allowed. And there was a whole song with it. And that just broke my heart. You guys know I have this really weird animal thing. Like I can't handle animals being kept apart from owners. I don't know. It's just a little over the top. So, but I remember that really well. And of course the great pumpkin. If Kirby were here, she'd be going nuts. She really loves, um, well, she had a dog growing up named Snoopy. I think her parents still have Snoopy. So, all right, should we start cutting? Okay, so um, I'm gonna cut out the Moneta first because I've sewn this like four times. And if you go on my website, which is a so -so .live, and, and it might change actually, I'm kind of, kind of rearranging my whole brand name and all that right now, now that we're getting close to the home sew pattern stuff and the, the plan for that. Um, but it'll still work. Uh, you can go there. I already have the Moneta listed. The links to the videos aren't there yet. They will be after um, the live. So, hi Louise. He loves Snoopy too. You hated that show, Megan. <laughs> Your comments crack me up. <laughs> I just love them. <laughs> Megan, you, you sound more like a Twitch watcher than a YouTube watcher, isn't that funny? Um, I even, did you see that I was like, so everybody in my stream except for one person's probably gonna be making culottes now and I was thinking of you. <laughs> Oh, Derek, you're making a long sleeve Fairfield. That's awesome. Did you see that one I posted on my husband? It turned out pretty good. Like a fit is really good on him. I'm pretty happy with it. My husband has very sloped shoulders. Um, and he was a fencer, you know, the sword kind, for a really long time. So his shoulders are developed in a really unique way. So it does make the fit of shirts interesting on him. Like he he would benefit from shoulder pads, but I, I'm not gonna, I don't like them. Like he would benefit it for the drape of the fabric, not himself, you know? So yeah, yeah. I haven't made the long sleeve version. I'm excited to see how it goes for you. You were Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah, you're totally Scooby-Doo, not Snoopy. <laughs> So, okay, so anyway, um, the Moneta is already on there. I'll, I'll, the projects for this week are starting to pop up on there, and then I'll put the links in once they're live. But um, I put a bunch of pictures of my Monetas. I put my Harry Potter one on there. Um, I put, um, let's see, I've made a Harry Potter one. I made one out of plaid fabric that is actually made up of cats when you look at it close up. It's an amazing fabric, and there's a close-up of the print. I have my knit print Monetta. I should have worn my Monetta today. I'll wear it tomorrow when I sew. Um, and then I have, I have one in dandelions I didn't post on there. I never got a picture of that one. I still wear it, but it's more like a house dress. It's more like in this fabric, which is really heavy. Um, feels really good on, it's a really comfy dress. So um, I have quite a few Monettas, just like me and Kirby were saying, we kind of put ourselves in Monetta jail for a while there, so we would stop making them. Cause they, they it does feel like, it's, it's like pretty easy to slip into the Moneta uh, rabbit hole and you start feeling a little bit sloppy after a while. Wear the Harry Potter one. Okay, I'll wear the Harry Potter one tomorrow. I love it. I love it. I'll, 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 um, I'll pull up the, try and pull up the picture of us because we are decked out. We're actually at Harry Potter World and we have our Spectra Specs on and our Luna bags and we were all in goofballs. Legit wizards and witches. That was us. So, um, but after I do the Moneta, we're doing the Linden sweatshirt and I've gotten two messages from random people, random meaning like viewers, not personal friends of mine, warning me about the collar on that. So I figured I'd do that one last anyway, just so we can work on the collar. Gina's made five Monetas, right? Yeah, so Gina's obviously not in Moneta jail yet. <laughs> I, I stopped Kirby after a while, Gina. I was like, stop making Monetas. <laughs> and then I put myself in, a, in my own personal Monet jail too. So, um, But this fabric was provided by my local fabric store, Honey Run Quilters. Look how wide it is. It's really wide. It, like I said, this fabric is such, it's a really nice, super stretchy, um, of an, it's a, probably an interlock. I should have looked at the end of the bolt, but they were closing. 
me see if there's so what I know about knits is this is a single knit and I know that because it's curling it means it had one needle bed when it was being made a single needle bed so it's a, a, a single knit as opposed to double knit which you've probably heard the term double knit and those um it they look the same front and back and they don't curl because there's opposing forces on them, you know, so it's not going to have that curl. So this is uh, Avalana by Stofa Fabrics, designed in Denmark. Hey, 94% cotton, 6% elastane. So got a lot of stretch and it's very wide. I'd say it's at least 54. I can't remember the width of my table. So. I think I'm gonna make the three quarter length sleeve. Um, the only mod I'm doing is I have my own pocket pattern for the Moneta because the pocket pattern in this is kind of hilariously tiny. Where is it? Look at this little, isn't this darling? <laughs> so it's basically your hand, but um, plus seam allowance. So um, it's like a mitten. <laughs> so I made mine a little bigger. And deeper you don't want your pockets too big you guys bigger is not always better you start putting stuff in there and your dress starts stretching down how do I know this because I still do it you know so let's see here um the only other oh I did do uh the mods I've done have been I drop my neckline so the traditional moneta the neck is high in the front and low in the back yeah it's a baby pocket size I mean what do they take us for <laughs> But, you know, they literally probably did it so people wouldn't overload their pockets with knits. It makes sense. So, all right. So we have the back, which um, that actually looks like the um, actual back neck right there. It's just the front that I've scooped down because it usually is a little higher. You can see the curve would be right, right here. So I think it's about, I want to say I dropped it one and a half to two inches. So... Yeah, Katie, that's so true. Cotton jerseys, um, they can be a little crooked and it's really easy to cut them off grain. Your grain line is important with knits, but it's not as critical as wovens, but they can, the print can look even more crooked. So um, here's our skirt. And I'm gonna do the three quarter length sleeve, which I've never done before. I've always done the cap sleeve. So this is obviously gonna be big enough to get our fronts across the fabric here and then we can do a, a skirt one skirt one skirt we're, we're pretty good on fabric uh i'm just thinking about the sleeve right now so let's just look at the sleeve so if i have my um we've had some fabric pickles lately haven't we so let's just look oh yeah plenty i'm gonna have so much fabric i can make myself a tank top afterward <laughs> All right, so let's just cut off this bit here and do our um, our top, our bodice, <clears throat> because I'm going to fold the fabric differently. So let's see. So I actually was pretty careful about how I folded it. This is my fold at that end there. So I'm just kind of looking for it to line up with one of the lines on the table. And then I'll try and cut it as straight as possible across to get it off, the piece off. Yeah, a tank would be kind of cute, right? Oh, you end up with twisted shirts, Katie. Ooh, that is a bummer. That's a bummer. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so uh, you can see the grain line on a single knit. I do have my selvage here. I'll just put this paper away here. I do have my selvage here, but you know, it's so curly. It's really hard to see and hard to use as a, a measure. But um, what I like to do is when I fold things, let's see, ooh, sorry guys. Uh, I try and line up the, the selvage here, but then, you know, like if I were just to line this up here and here, assuming it had been cut straight, like off of the bolt. So then I hold it up 
and I look for torque lines. Like, let's see if I can create some. Right, so that is really obviously torqued. You can see that, right? Even though I have these edges lined up. So what I try and do is I hold these kind of separate from each other, and then I wait till the fold down here looks pretty straight. Why well, don't wait for the fold to look straight? I just make, look for the fabric to look nice and flat. I don't care that these edges don't line up. I'm looking for this fabric to be relaxed and flat to the fold with these edges lined up, which is obviously hard to do when you've got these curly, curly things, right? So now that we have this pretty flat like this, let's put that center there. We have a little bit, I have a, I, I doubt you can see my fold line right here, but I can see it. And we'll just put the edge towards that, like this, and try for the same thing, right? We're looking for it to be nice and relaxed when we put it on the fold. You have to kind of just pay attention to what the fabric wants. Yeah, cutting, um, I did iron the fabric, Megan. I ironed it. This is how it looks. Yeah. Ironing won't help single knits. They're just brats. It's just how it is. So um, here is my biggest tip with cutting knits like this, that curl. Do not cut it unless you can sew it like starting the next day at the latest, okay? Because when all of your pieces, all the edges start curling, it is so hard to manage that project. It's hard for me as well. Like you'll end up thinking, okay, I've got this flat, and then you'll cut off a ton of fabric on one of your seams. So yeah, I like cutting it in manageable pieces. And Katie, mainly I do this because my table is so small here at the um, cutting table that I work on with you guys. I have a really big table over there. And there I would lay the fabric out and let the um, weight of it fall off the edges, like the ends, so that it kind of kept it in check and kept it nice and trued up with the um, grain line, you know? So this is still kind of a big thing. If I really wanted to be conservative with the fabric, I would fold this closer to where this edge is right here. And I'm gonna do that because of my pockets. So now that we kind of know how big we want it, Let's just see, we want our fold about right here. Like that. But look at the fabric, you guys. I know people think it's really hard to see the grain line on the fabric, but you can see the grain line. You can see it. Especially if, you're gonna, if you stretch it out like that a little bit you can see the little lines. All right, so now my question is, do I want my fabric with these arched black things like this, or do I want it like this? What do you guys think, like that? I should have decided this already, or like this. Yeah, the print is really fun. We looked up the name of it too, and I can't remember what it was on the bolt because I was like, what is that? Is like cotton ball branches? <laughs> so what do you guys think? I kind of like this, this or this. You can see them side by side. It is a one-way print, isn't it? Dang, I don't know if it's one way. What do you guys think? Up, so like this, okay. Carrie's voted. I'm Karen. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> Here, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'll just cut the pieces upside down to me. You can't tell. I know it's hard to tell. We'll just try. So yeah, I'm gonna kind of look here at my grain line and make sure. You can't pull a thread on knits. 
This is how I'm doing it. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I do need to flip this over, huh? <laughs> You'll answer to both. Okay, cool. Yeah, me too, Megan. So another thing you can do is you can take your salvage here. This side is going to unroll a little easier because it has this printing on it. Um, I don't know why, but it, it's better behaved than the other edge. You can kind of look at it and see if it's parallel to the, to the grain line. But torquing is definitely something we don't want. We say no to that. And twerking. <laughs> All right. I like sewing knits or cutting knits with the rotary knife so much easier that your knits stay flat to the ground. This camera keeps drifting. I can tell. And, um, Pinning it, I don't know, you have the risk of shifting the layers when you've already spent all this time sitting here getting it nice and flat, so. My pattern's getting a little tired. I wonder why. This has kind of a bump out at the bust. This is the back piece, so it's not as obvious. No darts, usually with knits. Okay, so uh, I always like marking the centers of my waist, especially when you have a gathered um, uh, skirt. Fix the bottom fabric. What do you mean? It's fine. Did it look like it was wrinkled? It could. You know, Carol, I think because it's really fast to put together, um, and it's really comfortable. It comes in a ton of sizes. Uh, it looks really flattering on for being just kind of a, a simple dress with a gathered waist. You can put pockets in it. You can use really fun prints. It's a silhouette that can kind of handle a fun print and look novel without you feeling a little too cutesy, you know? Okay. It looked rolled, yeah. I kind of figured. I'm checking, I promise. All right, so. That wide enough there? Yep, okay. Looks pretty good. So uh, sometimes you'll see people do this. They'll, they'll uh, lap their knits to kind of flatten them out a little bit. Um, I, I did that before and literally I felt like you just keep doing it and doing it, doing it. And it shifted everything so much that it, it just, you just kept doing it. It was like a endless festival of hitting your fabric, you know, I just try not to overwork it. Oh, I don't want to cut in my little ruler here. I taped my ruler, I used my little ruler tape on the table because I wanted to show you uh, stretch differences. So you need, I think, 20% stretch, which most knits kind of have, um, if you're gonna get them that, that have been made recently at your local fabric store. They're catering to us right now. So you're pretty safe. But there are some fashion fabrics out there. Um, they're gonna have less. Oh boy, that was a little wiggly. It's kind of awkward not to like be right over my fabric to cut. You don't realize how much you bend over your project until you can't. <laughs> and the most unflattering thing is when I see my head in there. All right, I'm gonna clean that up a bit. All right, so I'm gonna mark my uh, center front waist again, and I'm gonna do this notch. And the way I do it is I just angle it. 
I go like this. If I were to exaggerate it, I go like this across the tip. So then it's a really visible notch. You can do a slit into the fabric, but the little V when you're doing knits is so uh, much more visible if you're using your serger because you can remember you can't really pin using your serger. So having the little visible triangle, especially if we've gone over that edge with a serger and, and I, you know, I might end up doing that. I don't think I would on this piece, but especially on the skirt, I will. Um, you can still see your mark after you've surged it. Whereas like, you know how you guys, if you've ever used a serger, if you pre-serge your pieces and you go right over your notch, you're like, oh, now I don't know where my notches are. The, having a little V is helpful to, you know, have a visual indication. Um, this is my front and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to tell it from my back, but let's look at my back. I could be kind of confused by that. So, um, first of all, I want to fix this armhole because it looks a little weird to me. Oh, it's okay. All right. I do have, I have double notches at the back waist. That's fine. That's all I need. The double notches tell me everything. So now I have my front and my back. Let's do our sleeves. We have this little extra piece, so let's do our pockets. I was gonna make two Monetas tomorrow and cut two Monetas, but I was like, I do not need another one right now, you know? My hairpin is, do I have a hairpin? Oh, yeah, yeah, the little like flowers. I got those on Etsy a really long time ago in a whole bunch of colors. I've lost a few of my favorite colors, but I still have some. <laughs> All right, let's see, can I get four of these out of here? Maybe. They're side seam pockets and um, I could just do this. Yeah, I think I can get four out. I, I have so much fabric, you guys, I don't even need to be stingy, but why not leave it so that I might be able to do another project with the rest of the fabric, right? All my underwear trials, because Christy's got me so, like, in this, uh, so my curiosity is so piqued by sewing underwear. It looks so fun. Yeah, and if any of you are interested, um, Christy, a, a, a viewer here, has been sewing a ton of underwear, and I think she's been experimenting with bras as well, and she's totally new to it, and what she's turning out is amazing, you guys, um, and I think her Instagram is Christy Makes, if you're interested at all. Look at that. I can get them all right side up. Perfect. I'm actually gonna flip this around to me. Since I'm right-handed. I cut out my uh, shark fabric into a t-shirt before the stream. If I have time tomorrow, I'll sew it after, after the Monetta. <laughs> I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> Oh, that'd be awesome, Megan. I just noticed I don't have any notches on this. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. So maybe I should have showed you what I'm making. This is what I'm making right here, this middle one. Colette doesn't make printed patterns anymore, but um, if you're interested in really good solid patterns, good pattern drafting with a huge size range, um, they're a really great brand to check out. Um, there's usually this little collar here. I've never made that collar. It looks cute, but not for me. I usually do a shorter cap sleeve on this um, and uh, today I'm doing this this like three-quarter length one gathered skirt and pockets I just want to look at the pocket so it looks like the opening is just the entire pocket 
the hand opening. Hmm. All right. Hello, Nancy. Hi, Claire. Claire gave me the tip about the, she's one of the gals that gave me a tip about the collar on the linden. And you're right, Claire. I measured that thing and um, uh, I'm definitely going to adjust it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for the heads up. Especially since I'm cutting my lindens in a couple of different fabrics. Um, they're, they are going to react differently. All right. So now I'm going to do the skirt. I'm going to fold the fabric. Okay, just need to see about how much I need. Can I not get my... Uh, I may have to use two lengths for my skirt. Maybe I will be doing a cap sleeve. <laughs> oh, really, Melin? That's awesome. That's uh, that's interesting. It's not awesome at all. Uh, I I haven't sewn a lot of the seam work patterns, and they do seem a little bit like when I see them on the models. I'm not typically that like gun gunning for to make them. But um, the pattern drafting is really good. So if you can find the like fit that you need and um, the salt, the pattern drafting is really solid, you know? Yeah, they really are, Katie, you know. Hello, Snappy. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for coming to the live. It's awesome. Yeah, so I, I, Colette was the foundation brand for seam work. Um, and I do admit, like when I see the patterns and then when I make the seam work patterns, they're actually better than what the samples look like. So I don't know what that's about, but it's good to be wary of it, Melin. You're right. All right, so I folded a little too much over here. So let's bring this back over. Okay. Yeah, so if you're just joining, we are this week. Um, so it's my one year um, streaming anniversary this month. And is this the right direction, you guys? Wait a minute. Um, and um, so I'm streaming like five days a week. Usually it's just three. Okay, I almost cut that out upside down. So this week we're doing some knits and I'm using my serger and we're going to do cover stitch and we're going to do some pattern drafting. And for the pattern drafting, I'm going to do one whole stream devoted to how to copy an existing garment. Like we all have a garment that we really want, you know, another one of, right? That beloved pair of pants is now getting really like questionable whether you should be wearing them anymore, you know, <laughs> and um, maybe it's time to update them um, or maybe it's a, a really favorite shirt or whatever. So we'll talk about that and I'll show you how to do it. And then the other pattern drafting stream is going to be all about how to convert a pattern to something else that you want. Um, so if you're like, I really want to make a sleeveless version of this, blouse, dress, shirt, whatever, we can do that. So I know, Nancy, I'm getting spoiled with them too. Bye, Katie. Hope your car is good. <laughs> and um, yeah, I love the bow tops too, but I did heavily modify that one, Louise, by making it smaller, like making it more of a sleeve, set in sleeve, but it looks really cute on everybody. I just wanted a sp particular look. So if you guys have something in particular, you're like, I really want to know how to convert X, Y, Z or change. So if you have a shirt with a collar and you just want no collar on it, we're going to go over that. Um, we'll go over, um, you know, just all that kind of like modifying a pattern into another view so that you don't have to buy a whole nother pattern. If you're like, this is so close to what I want, 
Um, I just needed this one thing to be changed on it. Or you know this pattern works really well for you and you want to kind of start changing it into some other options. So we'll look at that. So if you guys have something in mind, you have a few days to think about it because I know all of you have something in mind and maybe it not, might not come to mind now and that's fine. So just send me an email or comment on the video or um, send it in Instagram or something and let me know what you guys are looking for because uh, it helps if I can prepare a little bit and have the right props for it. So yeah, I can add a sleeve to a sleeveless pattern. Drafting a sleeve from nothing um, is a whole specific episode, but we can take a sleeve we already have from something else. Adding sleeves to something sleeveless. All right, so that's two votes for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you kind of do need to start with a sleeve you already have. All right, so this is the front. Ah, I just love a new blade. I wasn't quite ready for one, but um, the knits I have planned for the sweatshirts are a little thick. I didn't want to mess around today. My poor pattern is getting so tired. I should transfer it to Manila, but that would mean I would keep making Monetas, and I probably shouldn't. Okay, so there's some notches on the skirt. I'm gonna do the center back, or the center front, uh, the center, always the center, and then the notch right here, because I think that's a um, kind of a guide for when you're gathering it up. Are they only, um, do they only get shrunk in length? Because yeah, you could still use it as a template. All right, so here's a front. I'll have to stack my patterns or my pieces up in a end. That's enough for a sleeve right there. That's plenty for a sleeve. Perfect. I may not get a tank top, Megan, but hey, I got a whole dress. Darts into princess seams. Yeah, I wrote that one too. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah, princess seams need to come back. They're so flattering. All right. That looks on green, so I'm just gonna see if that works. There we go. No, not at all, Nancy. No, that's really hard. Um, I have a special tool that I use. I use that little tracing wheel but not the tracing wheel you buy at the fabric store for using on, um, what's that? Um, it's like, there's like a, a carbon paper for pattern drafting. I've never used it. I'm not sure what it's called, but yeah, you, you get this special tracing wheel and I'll try and find the resource of where you guys can buy this tracing wheel because it's specific. Why isn't it sitting? Oh, it's right here. So this is mine. The points are really, really sharp. Like I can feel it as I'm touching it. I had this since college. <laughs> and so when you uh, transfer it, you run the tracing wheel uh, on the paper on top of your manila and it leaves holes and then you can see the holes and draw your lines on top of that. Um, if you don't have a tracing wheel, you can use anything sharp and just do pin pricks. So. Oh, really, Eileen? That's such a bummer. Dang. 
I'm surprised they shrank. Remember, always do right angles at your folds. Best you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I do know that, Nancy. I do it I do it pretty frequently. No, it's it's nice. And what I love about Manila is that you can trace around it. You can just put your weights on it, trace around it onto your fabric. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you can get the tracing wheel from More Plan. I've never heard of that. Great. Thank you, Louise. I'll try and remember that. Oh, you bought graphite paper. Okay, okay. Yeah, cool. All right, so we need a notch here for our pocket again. And then um, I'm going to put a double notch at the center back here just to remind myself this is the back. Just something to remind me. And then there's a double notch. Whew, hard to tell. I think it's this one right here. Wait, I think it's this one right here. All right, we just have the sleeves and then we're gonna get to this linden. I've been looking everywhere for one, I think maybe the gal emailed me and not commented on social media because she was looking for specific, um, specific ideas on how to convert the neckband of the linden into a couple of other patterns. Um, and I can't remember what one of them was. All right, so I'm just gonna chop off a piece of fabric here and then lay my sleeves, cut them together. Plenty of fabric. You can actually see the, I can see the print. Obviously you can see the print through the back of the fabric. I know that, <laughs> but, um, don't mistake the print of the this as the grain line because it's really easy to do. Sometimes um, when the print is happening onto the fabric, it's like a it's a roll, right? It's like a, a rolling bar that's printing. And sometimes you'll see on the back like a dark, uh, you know, ink splotch. Like it's just oh, it was you, Beverly? Okay, awesome. Yeah. So. Um, I can see like some of this is grain lines, some of it's print. And so when you are seeing these striations of the back of the ink, sometimes it looks like that's the grain line, the cross grain, but really it's just the ink being applied to the fabric. I can't really explain this well, you guys, because I'm not really an expert in that. I just know it's not the grain line. <laughs> so this is pretty good on the grain, but um, just don't mistake that sometimes for the grain line. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I don't get my sleeves upside down with one another. It's a good thing we're cutting out this this uh, fabric all in one. We don't have to worry, and that, and that the pieces can't be mistaken for being upside down because this print, man, it's kind of confusing. All right, so I'm gonna try and get my print or my uh, grain line perpendicular to the lines on my table just so I can use those as a guide when I lay this one on here. I've never cut this pattern piece. Oh, and what size am I cutting out? Let's see here. I am cutting out Extra small, small, medium, large. That's what I thought. I'm cutting out the large. Ah, the Elliot's woven? You know, interestingly, the most information you can find about turtlenecks is usually uh, turtlenecks meant for woven fabrics, which are cut on the bias.
Yeah, so Beverly, um, I measured the pattern today. And I, I don't think that was you. I, th I think that the pattern, there's something up with it. I'm not sure why. Because what was interesting about the linden is um, there, there's a lot of success with it. So that just means that um, people are either not hard to fit, right? Um, they're having good luck with their fabric choices. Um, I, I think the pattern's a really good pattern still, but I do feel like there's a couple of subtle things that are really easy to miss on that pattern. And one of them is the fact that on that particular pattern piece, it says to cut in rib or your self fabric. Um, but rib is completely different than your self fabric and it, and it work and it like reacts differently stretch wise. So if you were to, it's a small, small, medium, large. If you were to cut it in rib, you'd probably have better luck because you'd cut it on the cross grain. My paper was kind of getting off there. As opposed to like French terry, like the difference between French terry and rib is drastic. <laughs> this is pretty much the most wasteful thing I've cut in a long time. <laughs> All right. I'll probably get some of those scraps later. All right, so let's... This is so funny. Isn't it Colette that always puts the back on this side of the pattern and the front on this side? Like they print the pattern this way. This is always, yeah, it is. It's always Colette that does this. This is such an interesting, funny thing. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe they do it for copyright preventative stuff. Like they can tell. Because let me show you. Usually when you have a pattern, you are given the right side of the body to cut out, right? So this is the front and it's my, it's my right side. And then the back should, should lay to that. So that's also the right, but the sleeve, is that the same? Oh, but the sleeve is correct. So that's really funny because usually traditionally when you draft a pattern, you always draft the pattern with the front here, or you print it like this, front and back. Yeah, it is upside down. I don't know why I just made it, made it, why did it work just now? Oh, I was holding it upside down. So yeah, I'm correct, I'm correct, okay. <laughs> oh my God, I just put, I just pretended like the cap goes to the bottom of the arm. Doesn't that look like it would just go so well? But that's not how your sleeve goes. Your sleeve, your sleeve goes like this. Um, like this. Oh my gosh. Here, here's your back. Here's your front. And then your sleeve goes like this, right? So the back of the sleeve, it actually goes this way. So it's just a weird quirk that they lay their pattern pieces out on the fabric that way. I think it's kind of funny. And, and not everybody notices it. And it doesn't matter um, when you're just cutting it out, but say you're doing pattern drafting stuff, you're, you, it can be just a little confusing. <laughs> Sorry, it's such a tangent. tangent. <laughs> um, yeah, I put the sleeve up on the print. Is that what you mean, Karen? Don't scare me. <laughs> that feels like a sweatshirt to wear. <sighs> Beverly, I, I feel like um, the the So How 7 toaster could be a good one, except, and it has the kind of neckband you were trying to emulate. So How 7 toaster sweater. Um, I don't know the Helen's Closet. I haven't sewn any of the Helen's Closet stuff. Okay, here's my leftover. All right, so let's do the linden. All right, so. I measured the neckline around the um, pattern pieces, and then I measured the neckband. The neckband is just a really narrow strip of fabric that goes around the neckline. It's optional. And the neckband measured 16 and 3 quarters of an inch. 
but the neckline measured a uh, 28 and a quarter. So usually it's about two inches, maybe three inches different, depending on how stretchy the fabric is. You want your neckband about two inches smaller than the neckline. Two inches, like speaking in terms of inches, isn't accurate for stretch because it usually is a percentage of the stretch of the um, neckline. And I, I actually don't know that number and I've never known that number and I worked in knits straight out of college and went right into the garment industry and in knits and no one ever told me that number. So it probably exists somewhere. I don't know it. I've never heard if it exists or not. So basically, I, I feel like it was 20% honestly, but I, I feel like now I'm not going to trust my memory of being 20 to 24 years old in the garment industry when uh, so many patterns today say they need 20% stretch and knit, I feel like it could be kind of confusing. Oh uh, yeah, it is, it's an altered boat neck. Mm -hmm. Beverly, how do you feel about making this one without a neck band? Just rolled edge, like letting it raw be raw, or do you want something more polished? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a lot of fabric to this neck band. And if it's too big, I'll, I'll check it before we sew it and see. So it is always the trick. You want the neck band to lay flat on the, on the, you know, the body. And this one is kind of big. I'm going to double check my measurements, but I already did. So, you know, there's quarter inch seams. I'm doing the size 14. Um, so this is four and a quarter, four and a quarter. Let's see here. This is three and seven eighths, three and seven eighths. And then you have the sleeve as part of the neckline. And this is the 14 up here. Quarter inch, quarter inch, six inches, six inches. So if you take all three of those measurements, add them up and double them, you get the entire total neck circumference. Um, and the neck band says only cut one on the fold, not like two. But see, there's no, there's no yardage allowance for rib knit on the pattern back. You found it way too wide. Oh, you because you found the neckline to be too big. Yeah, yeah. 15% Malin, awesome. Thank you for that number. Hi Cheyenne, how's it going? Ah, thanks for following So Darn Happy for on Twitch, that's awesome. I'm also streaming live on YouTube, just so you know. But I think Olivia's there in Twi on Twitch with you. <laughs> She's listening in. Um, so there's no, so let me back up a little bit. I, I love the Grain Line Studio patterns. Please don't ever think just because something's incorrect or something I disagree with is a, I, I don't find that to be criticism. Pattern drafting is a, um, an art and a skill that can be interpreted many ways. You can get to the same result lots of different ways and there's lots of proper ways to do it. And there's lots of preferences. Sewers are so opinionated. We all have our own views, right? And so um, I just look at it as one more way to get there. And it's just good to know what you might come up against, right? That is the only reason I say these things. So, um, and I'm really honest about it. I'm not as honest as I could be because I don't want it to come off as negative because a lot of people can't really handle that kind of um, um, conversation, you know? But for me, I just, I'm, I'm kind of like that, you know? I'm just kind of like, just tell me, lay it on me and let's do it, <laughs> you know? But not a lot of people feel that way. So, um, but this neckline, I'm not sure how you would get it to fit into the shirt unless this was a really, really, really stretchy rib. But there's no rib allowed, like a yardage requirement here. So you don't even know to buy. Oh, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Here it is right here at the very bottom. Okay, I missed that every time I looked at this. I looked here. I looked here. I did not see it. So there is a ribbing yardage thing. It's just under the finished measurements, not with the um, fabric requirement. So there you go. That's your tip. That there is a rib yardage requirement. I missed that. I don't have rib. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do self. And self is fine. You just need to probably 
make the neckband almost the exact same length as the neckline except for like one to two inches probably about two inches that's just so it lays flat because if you made it exactly the same as the neckline the neckband's going to stand straight up remember the um, melalo we just sewed the other day and we had the collar stand i know that's woven but that is exactly what the neckline neckband would do is it would just go straight up but if you you know make it less than the neck line seam the length of the neckband if you make it less it's going to lay flat now you don't make them curved because the knit is is forgiving and what's happening is um yeah i'm gonna draw a picture so here is our thank goodness the air just turned on all right here's the front here's the back here's the sleeve okay so the neck band here, right? And then we'll put a seam in it. This measurement right here is different than this measurement right here, right? And that's why you need the neck band to be smaller than this edge, the sewn edge right here. You need this part to lay flat. So that's what's happening there. So if you just try try and separate that out, like don't think of it as a sweatshirt, don't think of it as what you need it to do, what you want it to look at. Don't think of your opinions about it. Look at it logically. What's happening right here? And so if you were to put a piece of paper flat on your neckline, what would you have to do? You would have to cut a bunch of like pieces out of it right here, right? And like wedges, right? Actually this way. So you'd be doing, to get it to lay flat, you would have to cut out on this edge here, right? To get it to lay flat. So the, the thing with knit though, the beauty of it is it's doing all the work for us, right? Because it's kind of stretchy. So if this measurement on the outside of the neck band is smaller than what it's sewing to, you're stretching it to that seam and then the inner circle will lay flat fingers crossed <laughs> so it's just finding that kind of balance with your fabrics that you're picked um, and seeing what works best with your fabrics and so like i always say we don't get to do this 15 times before we get it right right you don't have enough fabric time and money to make one sweatshirt so all right so for my first one I'm gonna sew the or cut the one for Honey Run Quilters because they gave us this really fun fabric. <laughs> Nobody has cut anything off the bolt yet there, and I was like, well, let's do it. Alright, so let's get this. So I'm gonna go for not torquing. Always a good thing to go for, right? But the the sweatshirt, so this is the print, this is not. The gray is not the print. The, the way you get, um, look at this, there's hardly any stretch. So, ah, gosh, Nancy, I'm working on it. I'm working on how to explain things. I, I honestly, um, I do a little prep before I'm working with you guys, but I don't figure out what I'm gonna say because I can't. I can't until I'm talking about it with you. I'm one of those people that processes things verbally and I'm really sorry about that. That's the fact that you have to kind of hear me work it out, make errors and then get to the, the correct point. But um, I'm working on it. I'm working on getting better about it. All right, so it just all makes sense in my head and I kind of just know it and I'm just trying to figure out how to transfer it to other people. So, um, does this look one way to you guys? Let's see. It looks... Right? It can go either way, right? Just making sure. Yeah, these little big-headed unicorns are kind of funny. So I'm going to do this as the body, and then I'm going to use this um, double face knit for the sleeves. Look at this stuff. It is nice. I'm going to use this for the neck band and the cuffs too. That might be gilding the lily a bit. <laughs> but, okay, good. Okay. Okay, I'm glad you guys. Thanks for reassuring me. <laughs> Sometimes need it. <laughs> 
Okay. So um, we have the sleeve here, and I'm going to cut that out of contrast. We have a front, we have a back, and then there is a, a waistband, sleeve cuff, and neckband. I haven't sewn with knits or made knit, pa knit patterns in a really long time either. You know, when, when you're, uh, like, it seems kind of terrifying when you go out into the world out of college, right? I mean, I'm sure some of you remember that moment where you're um, like, okay, uh, let's see if college taught me everything I knew, and you go out into the world. Um, going to a school like I did that was really specialized in exactly what you'd be doing out in the world helps, right? It's like going to a trade school, going to fashion school is like going to a trade school. Um, and when you get to that factory, you don't have to come up with all this stuff on your own. You don't have to design patterns or figure out designs. You can be brand new and walk in the door and they're like, all right, here you go, newbie. You need to make these 30 looks and they hand you a sketch and they're like, here's the rack of patterns over here. Um, look for the silhouette, silhouettes that work and then you can ask around about what works and what doesn't. And so, um, that's what you you have the benefit of this library of patterns and other pattern drafters who will hopefully say don't use that one use that one yes these are sponsored by honey run louise which is my local fabric store and they do take orders you just need to give them a call on the phone i have been tagging them in the posts on instagram but honey run quilters and chico and they have all these fabrics i oh when i pick things to make from there i typically they have this fabric too um, I try and pick something that they have a lot on the bolt of. I try and help out my fabric store. I'm like, ah, oh, this one doesn't look like it's going. I'll buy some of it. I'm kind of like that. I'll, I'll sacrifice myself for it if I'm not even that into it. But it always turns out great. Okay, so it looks like there's two different views. I didn't realize it was a shaping. View A and view B. This, they don't, what? <laughs> Where's the view A and view B different? View A, view B. View B, view A. So one has the waistband and one doesn't. What do you guys think? Waistband or no? Yeah, so I don't get to keep these two. I'm just gonna give them to them and then they'll be hanging in the store, which is great. Cause they would love it if I would make garments for them. And I am like, well, how about I just make them for you guys and you have them. So no waistband, no waistband. I know, I'm kind of thinking of the same thing. I think cuffs, yes, but no waistband. Because we'll get to, we get to sew as if we're putting on a waistband on the sleeve cuffs. So you'll get that kind of technique at least. All right. So we'll go for this right here, this view B swoopiness right here. And then um, I think I decided I'm a size, I'm making mine a little big. I'm going to make it a little big um, for me. And I'm gonna make the 14. It's not that much bigger. It's just a tiny bit big. But you know, we're going for cozy, right? Maximum cozy. I'm gonna get this line. Uh, interestingly, when I was looking at, I was actually looking for something specific and I ran across this really interesting article on threads about sewing with knits. I'm not sure, I, I meant to look at when it was written, but one of the really interesting things is that she prefers not to use a serger or a stretch stitch when she sews knits. And she'd been sewing knits since before sergers were even around. And what she does is she sews a straight stitch, nine stitches per inch, and she stretches the seam as she goes. And then when she lets it relax, the um, stitches are even closer together. Yeah, it really does, Louise, yeah. It would be too much, I know, Megan, right? But you do, there are a few few lindens out there with the contrast. I'm gonna try and preserve my pattern here by just, um, I'm just gonna fold this as I go. I like this. Yeah. So at least on this one, I'm not doing self for the um, neckband. I will be doing it on mine. 
I was gonna cut out the Italian wool today, you guys, but I'm kind of chickening out. I'm gonna wait because I feel like I wanna know exactly how these fit before I make it out of that Italian wool. Now, remember that yarn dyed striped knit I have with the reversible fabric? Um, I'm going to wait because I might line that with like a fabric so it's not itchy because it is a little scratchy and I can't tell if it's scratchy because it's bloody hot here or what. Why is this notch? Where's my notch? What the heck? Look at that. My, my notch is missing. <laughs> I think it's this one. Yeah, look, my notch is not missing. That's it. It's just not connected. <laughs> it's because, you know, they like to use the, um, the notch is also the same exact, um, uh dashed thing don't risk the italian wait which tip did you see on grain line because i didn't see i didn't see any tips i mean i looked at a few of their um of their favorite lindens which was really fun to see okay here we go so i did my little center oh i did not need to do that shoot i'm not doing a waistband don't do that if you're not doing a waistband <laughs> Because hopefully my seam will just, I'm going to cover stitch this, so um, it'll be okay. So this just gets folded up then. Okay. All right. All right, I don't think I need this pattern piece. Yeah, right, Brooke? That's exactly what I was thinking. And I was actually thinking of um, washing it in soak. Do you think that would help, Brooke? Now that I know you're still here. I know you're busy doing your winding. Okay, I know this isn't a one-way print, but I'm not going to take a risk. <laughs> I'm going to flip it over anyway. Oh, you never use, what do you use? Do you use, um, eucalin? I used to always use eucalin, but it got harder and harder to find. Dang, I just switched my fabric around and I almost just did the same thing. It's hilarious. You lengthened yours by two inches front and back and sleeves and you had to make a smaller size. It was too big. <laughs> oh, Louise, that's on their site. That's awesome. I looked for errata on their site, but I didn't see any because I was a little concerned about this collar. I'm sure it's why like pattern companies never join my stream or like ever like promote because they're so scared that I'm going to you know, say something bad. I'm just gonna say the truth. Truth is not bad. It's just what it is. The truth is such a weird thing. I think about it a lot. Hey, thanks for subscribing, Susan. <laughs> Okay, so, um, yeah, I've been thinking about it just because it's like, if you say the truth, you're the bad guy, right? Which is so weird, especially if it's something about someone who's, like, doing something wrong to you. I've thought this a lot lately because, um, there's a couple of things that have happened around me locally, and I'm just like, that's not, a, that's not okay, and no one's going to call these people on it, right? So, if you, if you were to say, hey, that's not okay, it's obvious it's not okay, you know what's right from wrong. Um, I didn't do my center did, oh good. But you'd be the bad guy, right? It's so funny. And um, it's the same with this. It's like, 
Oh, it's just how it is, right? The neckband's a little bit off. Okay, great. Good to know, right? Now everybody knows and they can make the change. It might work for other so Maybe it'll work for our knit, our rib knit. What do you guys think? <laughs> well, let's see. This, this sleeve, this fabric is amazing. It's so heavy and nice. Sorry, let me get the full effect here. Yeah, right? That's what I was thinking. See, I think this this is going to really calm it down. See, see it in person. Right? That's what I was thinking, Elaine, is Euclid would be really good to soften that one. I know, the subscription animation is really cute. It wasn't the corgi. The corgi swimming in the water is so cute. All right. We're going to validate these unicorns. And now people will want it. All right, so um, this is a double knit, I'm pretty sure, because look how nice and flat. It's got really great um, drape. This would make this, and it's yarn dyed, so it's not printed, which is awesome. I love stuff like this. It's like a proper knit. Baking soda. I've never heard that, Polly. Is this stripes bugging your eyes, you guys? It's kind of bugging mine. Um, I'm trying to get it so that the stripes are. are um, lined up right now. Sorry if your eyeballs are getting fatigued. So we don't have to worry about the waistband. We just need to be able to do the cuffs, which is no problem over there. And I think I can get the, the neckband right there. So that'll work. Yeah, I mean, unicorns and stripes, right? This is the hem. We're not going to do this. I, I like using lengthen and shorten lines for stripe alignment, you know? tunic and unicorn that would be really cute they actually have a um dress pattern at the fabric store for fleece and it has these little angled pockets right here it's pretty cute and you could totally do that in this it's like they did it in a fabric really similar to the unicorn print in the way that it stretches and stuff is this my 14 where's my 14 yep just making sure Got to make sure I don't go through this because you you need it to be on the cross grain for the stretch. View A, lengthen and shorten the Cut here for view B. Oh, no. We're doing view B for the um, body but not the sleeves. A hoodie dress tunic. You know, I feel like, does that company Jali, J-A-L-I-E, have one? I don't know why they pop into my head. A hoodie tunic. I already do all that? Oh, I did. Okay. That's great info, Brooke. It's really not that scratchy either. So just like you say, like once I put it on, it'd be fine. 
And um, on top of that, like, I'd probably um, wear it over a shirt, you know, like an overgarment. All right, I'm going to do my notches here. You only have a quarter inch seam allowance. Don't go overboard on your notches. You just need a little tiny nick, and that's it. These sleeves look pretty long, so I'm kind of, um, like I'm pretty sure, like if I'm putting a, if I was, if I'm putting a, a band on it, that'd be okay, because then you'd have a little bit of, of like bl blousing, and when you stretch your arm out, it doesn't ride your sleeve. Yeah, I was just say that one of the big four has a pattern exactly. I was thinking the same thing, but I don't know. Tilly has a hoodie dress tunic. Ah, they have some fun patterns. There you go, Megan and, and um, Malin. So you guys want Malin, right? Okay, so what am I going to increase my neckband to? All right, so also let's talk about percentage of stretch. So if you are wondering how much stretch your fabric has, you're going to figure it out by um, taking a certain amount, stretching it, and seeing how much it stretches, right? So this is the selvage, and typically the selvage is kind of, it's kind of bound up, like it doesn't stretch as much right there. So you kind of want to be away from the selvage. So um, a lot of companies just do five inches. You can do more. I, I like doing more because it's more accurate, but we'll do the five because it's easy to calculate. So you're gonna hold it at five inches and then just stretch it naturally. Don't overstretch it, stretch it naturally. If you can get it to stretch more than an inch past the five inches to six inches or more, you're in the 20% book. So, um, cause 20% of 10 inches would be two inches, right? So if you're stretching, that's the easy math, right? So stretch 10 inches. And if you can get it past the 12 mark, which I can easily get, that's 20%. For the sweatshirt, I don't think it has that. Pretty sure it doesn't have that. It could, let's see. Oh yeah, I can almost get really comfortable 20% stretch. Ooh, this is soft. Is nice. I, this is another one of those garments where I'm like, I don't. I saw this fabric in the store and I was like, eh, I don't know about that. And now the more I think about it, I'm like, this is gonna be kind of cute. <laughs> All right, so let's fold this on our stripe here. All right, so let's see here. This is 16 and three quarters and our neckline was 28, right? So let's cut this. I'm gonna say since it's so stretchy, I'm gonna cut this at um, 24 inches. Yeah. I slowly broke <laughs> Ah, cool. Halifax hoodie by Hey June Handmade. That's awesome. I like Hey June Handmade patterns. They have a website, Megan, but you can't shop from it. Just give them a call and they'll help you out over the phone. I don't know if they'll ever do a website or not. They're constantly getting new stuff in though. My computer just gave me a notification I've never seen before. So let's see here. Um, like, I, like this is one way I could check. Hey, Maribel, how's it going? Your name is so familiar. All right, so let's see here. Uh, let's see. 10, 24. Okay, so here's 24 inches right here. And I'm wanting it to go to 28, which is really easy, right? But 16 and three quarters, let's see. Getting this to go all the way to my, uh, it's not even possible. All right, you guys. So you definitely wanna alter this neckband pattern. Okay. 
I like your little pun there. <laughs> so let's see if this, if my neckline is 28 inches here, I'll mark it on the table for you guys. Wait, what did I say my neckline was? Yeah, so my my neckline is 28 and a quarter, all right? So, all right, we'll do that. 18, <clears throat> 28, right? So this is my neckline right now. So if I want to make sure my neck, my fabric is going to stretch that far, Let's see if I got it go, go here. I can easily stretch that far to here, which is cutting off five inches. But 16 and three quarters, if I were to do that, which is basically this much. Okay, there's my pattern. Could I do that? I could. could maybe maybe I'm being a little too paranoid I'm not I'm not gonna take a chance oh, I'm, I'm so glad Maribel thanks so glad good to have you here so this pattern piece is one and three quarters I've definitely been proven wrong before right Look at the pocket I just did on the um, <laughs> culottes that I was like, what? I'm not cutting these on the cross grain. Turns out the pocket, when it's sewn on the body, is um, at the cross grain. So um, I'm just, I just cut that perpendicular to the stripe. That's how I need to do that. And now I'm going to cut, let's see, where is my fold line? One and three quarters. Let's look at my stripe here. One and three quarters. So if I do that, it would put one stripe around the neck like this. So let's let's position this where the stripe is kind of in the middle. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll just make it symmetrical. All right, so. I definitely don't want it too loose. Eighteen. Eighteen twenty eight. This would be my neckline. Right here. I'm trying to decide where I want my stripes to be on the neckline. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> if it's one and three quarters. This is how big it is, plus a quarter inch seam allowance. This is my finished neck band width. It's really small. Do I want a little stripe like that going around? That could work. That could work. All right, so let's just cut this straight down the middle and make it symmetrical. Ooh, this rib is, is really nice. I wish I had more of it. At least I can go get some for myself. You could even try it on, right? You could even try and get your neck band on, you know, like baste it onto your neckline. How much am I gonna cut off? I 
This isn't exactly one and three quarters of an inch wide because I'm going for symmetry, but that's okay. Uh, typically, uh, neck bands on t-shirts are like three quarters of an inch or seven eighths of an inch wide finished. And this one's a little bit under that. It's more like five eighths of an inch. You'd make me here's a tad bit bigger. Wider wise. Yeah, it's pretty narrow. That's too big of a notch there. This is pretty bold. I think being narrow is gonna be okay on, on this print, but I agree with you, Megan. I, I think I would probably make mine wider sometimes too. Show two stripes. I don't think it's, um. It had to be pretty wide. Let's see, could I get two stripes? I think I could. I kind of like one. Narrower is flatter. Mm hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go with this width, I think. But I think I'll make the cuff a little narrower too. <laughs> All right, so let's decide. This is my neckline. Should I just go for the, I should go for the pattern, right? I should just do what they say. That way, oh no, I can't do that, that's too small. All right. All right, because this would be 16 and three quarters and it would have to stretch to there. It would be just all stretched out, you know? So let's just cut off about, let's cut off about, Hmm. Sorry, I'm thinking. I think I'm going to cut off five inches. One, two, three, four, five, right here. All right, we'll start with that. This is so soft. I'm really into this, this rib. <laughs> All right, that's my neck band. Oh, so let's find out the measurement I did. I ended up cutting mine 18 plus, so 23 and a quarter inches. Um, so I did, I cut about five inches off exactly. I'm gonna cut mine 23 and three quarters inch. All right, that's with seam allowance. Where's my cuffs? And all that, I think I've lost my cuffs. Anyone see my cuffs? Well done. Oh, there they are. They're there. It's like a puzzle around here, you guys. All right. <laughs> I think I'm going to rearrange my studio again. I kind of want to get my big table under the camera. I have more space here. Now I didn't really question the cuffs. I didn't really get any comments for that. And um, this looks a lot like cuffs I've, I've used before. I have enough fabric to recut them if I have to, which is great. I don't have enough fabric to recut my neckband. I don't think. 
Oh, let's look at my stripes here. I'm just gonna center my piece over the stripes. So at least no matter what, it is um, symmetrical. I like symmetry. And I stacked my stripes underneath. Hopefully they're actually stacked. Yarn dye is one of the only things you can kind of count on for, um, but look at that, that one's kind of wiggly right there. I'm gonna cut it at the, it's not too bad, you see that? I cannot get that, look at that. It's like, I'm like hacking and slashing right now. I just wanna be able to see that my stripes are stacked up. So has anybody sewn with knits much here? The cups are good? Awesome. Thanks. Ooh, did, are there already pre-made cuffs, Megan? That's fun. I've seen those. I just saw some somewhere. I think actually on the Rain Shed website, they have some. This is my 14 right here. This is getting too narrow now. I'm slipping, you guys. You only sew with knits these days, you need, that's awesome. Do you use a serger or do you just like to do it on your home machine? I remember you you did a knit Moneta. <laughs> We're twins. Oh, Megan, I'm really glad you already picked out my outfit for tomorrow. Doesn't that look crooked? It is kind of crooked. Surge all the way, yeah. Oh, the Blackwood cardigan. I've seen that one, Melon. I'm gonna look at this. This will be my cuff. <laughs> All right. As painful as that was, now I'm going to do it for the other fabric. <laughs> Here's our extra. Um, I'll have to figure out the neckband all over again because I am using self. But I'm using this and this. So what do you guys think? Um, this is the stuff I got from Hearts. I can't remember where I got this speckle knit. Maybe, maybe Stone Mountain Daughter, maybe Hearts. That's kind of a rainbow speckle. And this has this really great texture. Um, the In my face cam, it, the color is better. It's more of a blue. This side's super, wait, this side's super soft. This one here, you can see it's kind of brushed. I really want it against me, but you know. I don't know why we always put the fuzzy side on the outside. Yeah, that's awesome, Gina. And you know, on the um, the Linden, you can use your serger 100%, especially if you have a cover stitch. If you don't have a cover stitch, then you'd have to use your straight stitch. Yeah, right, Megan? I know. So what do you think? Do you think, I'm thinking the body, what was I thinking? Okay, so I have a lot of each. I could actually make probably two, one one way and one the other way. So do you think white body and blue sleeve? Sorry, it's so blown out, huh? So it'd be like white body, 
blue sleeve and maybe blue waistband. This is stretchier. It would be better for the um, neckband and cuffs. I kind of like this setup uh, because this is a French terry. It's a French terry, body blue and sleeves white. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. I think that would look, um, I think that would look really good. Let's see. Look at all this fabric I have. <laughs> That's the thing with wide fabrics. You really get your money's worth. <laughs> Blue body, white sleeves. Yeah? Body blue, sleeves white. All right, me too, Megan, but my sleeves get filthy. My sleeves get like, like, like down here. Body blue, sleeves white, all right, okay. Blue body would hide ice cream drips. Good point, Eileen. And watermelon drips, because watermelon stains. That's the only time watermelon betrays me. <laughs> yeah, and you say white body for you, Melin. Well, I have enough. Maybe I should do both. I actually think you could do I could do a sweatshirt out of this whole thing. It's kind of like that way. And coffee spills. Good point. We're such slobs, aren't we? <laughs> We are slobs, man. We're disgusting. See, that's the funny thing. Like, people always think guys are disgusting, but women are kind of gross too. Especially teenage girls. <laughs> okay, so, um. Yeah. This is a single knit. It's a little curly, not as bad as that um, interlock was. Not sure what this is. What did, um, look how wide it is, dang, it's off my table. What did Lexi call this? It's like rayon and, was it rayon and cotton, I think? I'm spending all this time folding that, but I shouldn't. All right, white sleeves, white sleeves, okay, not slobs, busy, always on the go, that's right, Karen. <laughs> we know how to turn that around, don't we? Look at me putting pattern pieces away like I'm done, ha, all right. Front and back, right here. Neck band and cuffs, which I'm gonna do in the blue. Maybe I would just hem the sleeves, not do cuffs, but I would do, um, yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do, you guys, is waistband, neck band, no cuffs, right? So there'd be a blue waistband, blue neckband, no cuffs, just hems. Yeah? Because I don't think this is going to be a 20% um, stretch. Let's see. Yeah, it's more like a traditional French terry. You can do that for cuffs. The only way you care is just eat while driving. Exactly. You're that busy, Karen? Oh, man. Yeah. So I'm not forced to share meals with little people. <laughs> Lately, my family's tradition is um, we eat together watching Big Bang Theory every night. It's like the like quintessential thing they warned us against doing, but it, it is it is really I love that show. It's it makes us all laugh. My daughter's more of a modern family type, but um, we we kind of. We try, I try and share and do Modern Family sometimes too, which is really funny too. So, and that's the only TV I watch. 
is modern is a uh, Big Bang Theory, which by the way is done and there's no more new episodes. It's only reruns. <laughs> yeah, I know. No cups will be nice, huh, Louise? And plus the blue on the white. I don't know. That might be. I can always add cuffs later. Okay, so I don't have a one-way print. These two sweatshirts are gonna fit so differently from one another because this one, the body is really stretchy and the sleeves aren't. And the other one's the reverse. You hate Modern Family, Megan? I didn't like it in the beginning either. It's grown on me and it really, it's like, because my daughter likes it, that's really intriguing to me. Like, like when you're getting to know, I don't know how many of you have older kids, like teenagers, but when they really start developing their own tastes and personality, it's like, it's like one way to get to know them is to hang out and do what they like to do, right? And see what makes them laugh and what tickles them about things. And I, I find it really fascinating. All right. Yes on the neckband, yes on the waistband. So we're gonna mark our centers there. Got my sleeve notch. This is gonna go a lot faster this time. The Big Bang Theory is I, like, either people love that or hate it and I love it. This makes me so, it makes me laugh so much. I have seen some of those episodes, you know, seven times. I still laugh. I should have probably cut off a piece, huh? Was that you, Polly, or was it Katie saying that? Like, I probably should have cut off a piece here, but I have a better handle on how I'm doing this this time. This is really easy for me to see the grain because of the, the heathering. But well, that's what I was going to tell you about. So when you see gray, like in that unicorn print, the gray heather, um, that is because it's one fiber is polyester and one is cotton and they can they dye it and only one picks up the dye that's why you'll find like this is probably the same thing it's got two different fabric contents because when they dyed it the blue one picked up the darker and one picked it up as lighter are into pimple popper <laughs> what's pimple popper is that a show or is that just like a term for a style of show <laughs> never heard that. My daughter likes some like really sophisticated stuff. I'm always like, oh, whoa, I don't really like that show. I love murder mysteries, though. I'm really into like the independent things lately, too. And some of the HBO stuff. All right. But, you know, mostly I just play video games. <laughs> so I'm not watching TV. <laughs> All right. This cuts like butter. Neckband, yes. Waistband, yes. Sleeve. But when I do the cuff on the sleeve, if it's a big enough distance, I'll add a center notch on that too. Hi, Terry. How's it going? <laughs> Ew. Like medical stuff? That's funny. Why not all blue? I don't know. I mean, I could, I think I have enough to do one all blue. This fabric, by the way, um, comes in a lot of different colors. It was hard to, um, it was hard to choose. I had three of them on the table. I was going to go home with three and I was like, all right, <laughs> you can always come back for more. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't need a uh, six of the same garment in different colors, you know? 
Okay, I do not want the sleeve band, right? But I did want the waistband. What do I do with that? Do I have it out? No sleeve band. Here's the neck band, here's the sleeve. What do I do with that one? I keep uh, being too cavalier with my pattern pieces. This is why I always put them back right away. I thought I stuffed, stuffed it in here when I decided not to do it. Well, I can always draft one. <sighs> Sigh. Okay, let's do the neck band. Hello, Eliza. Hello, child of God. How's it going? Um, I am, uh, let's see, we made the, um, oh, it's sketchy. Oh, busy day cooking with kids, Terry. Oh, it happens. Um, I am uh, cutting and sewing knits this week. So we cut out a Monetta dress by Colette Patterns and now I'm doing some Linden sweatshirts by Grainline Studio. And I just lost a pattern piece, so now I'm looking around for it because it's probably right in front of me. So remember my neckline. So this is probably right here not wide enough or long enough I mean to use as my neckband pattern so we'll cut it from here I, I like when I have these really long skinny pieces like like this neckband is is only one and three quarters of an inch wide I find it more accurate if I just use my ruler and cut it out you know and I can see the grain line on this, which is really nice. So I'm gonna get a nice straight spot first. And then, um, this actually might be the right length right now. I'll just cut it two inches wide, make it a little different and a little easier to, to cut out. And I marked my neck line length here so to double check my fabrics that are gonna work. So here's my neck band. Now where's my waistband? Oh, brother. Didn't I put it away, you guys? I can't believe I lost it. All right, well, we'll just cut out one ourselves. How wide do we want our waistband to be? Let me um, cut off a, make a straight edge here. So I think like, I'm gonna make it like six inches cut. What's the cuff? What's the cuff? The cuff is five inches. And the cuff is usually the same or a tiny bit smaller. So I can go with five. Two inches wide, right? That's what I was thinking too. So if I make it four and a half or five, um, cause it's quarter inch seams. So I'll do it five since it is so stretchy. And then, um, I'm going to need to figure, have to figure out what my, how my waist measurement is on the shirt. Dang. I don't think I got that straight today. Okay, I cut that off right there. Okay, 
So at least you're getting a lesson in, on a, how to draft a waistband. It ran away with a neckband, totally. One of these times it's just gonna magically appear here. But sometimes you lose your pattern pieces, right? So right now our, our waist measures, um, 28 and a half plus 22 and a half, which is 22 and a half and 28 and a half. What is that, 51? Remember, I can't do math in front of people. You like me watching me wing it? I, I don't really feel great about winging it. <laughs> yeah, 51. Um, and so I'll make, I don't like my waistbands to cinch in very much. I think it went, I think it went over the edge of the table too, but I don't see it. I, it's, it must be hung up on something back there. I just don't see it anywhere. That's my recycling bin and there's boxes in it, so it's not there. I'll have to look in the garbage. Does this happen to you? It's like when you drop your seam ripper and you can't find it and then you find it under your presser foot or your, your foot pedal because my foot pedal is off the ground. <laughs> okay, so it's 51. Um, so I think I'm going to make it like 48, 47. I know it might be in the fabric. No. It's not with my moneta. Oh, well. I don't mind drafting it. So I like my waistband to just kind of hang down as part of my, um, with my white fabric, you think so? I don't think so, yeah. I have the, I know I folded it there. There's the neckband, it's not there. It's like staring at me and laughing right now. I always think that. I think, I feel like I anthropomorphize everything. It comes from growing up with my mom. So it's a really big distance. Remember, the bigger the piece, the more stretchy it's gonna be. Um, this is really lightweight for this, uh, this here. So it's good it's going to the body of the other one. It's not gonna be a problem to put it on there because it's so stretchy. So I can make it just so that it has no cinching and make it just a little bit smaller than that length, which, you know, if I cut it like 47 inches, it's with the white fabric. Where? What are you guys seeing? This is the sleeve, this is the neckband. That's the neckband. You guys are trolling me. <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> It'll be fine. Let me cut. Move this off here. I made it four and a half, right? So we're gonna go for a two inch wide waistband. 18, 36, and then uh, I think it's wide enough, huh? Good thing that fabric's wide enough. brainstorming um that's why i don't want to make it too much smaller i don't want it to get stretched out exactly why is this wider wait did we change widths <laughs> megan i thought we went with four and a half. Oh, i started with five and i went to four and a half damn Damn, now we're at four and a half. Oh well. This is what happens when you're multitasking live. Come on, get up there, get up there. So 
so much easier to cut out fabric where you can see the grain line too. Okay, now I have a nice continuous piece. So I'll just continue with this four and a half width all the way down. Trim off the um, half inch that I have on that other piece now. And then I'm gonna check the length. I feel like a couture house right now, the way I'm doing this. That's totally what they would do. They just kind of, one of a kind, baby. They don't need to make a pattern. That's how they get away with that. What do you guys think of that being the outside? Oh, can you really see that very well? As opposed to that. This is fuzzier. This looks like the wrong side. It's not your fault. Ah, thank you, Claire. All right, now I need the centimeter conversion to inches. Just double check the width here. I made a hat, hat matching hair tie. I think this would just pull apart. You guys are awesome. Thirty-six. Oh wait, I need to measure from here. Thirty-six. Plus six would be forty-eight. And um I'm gonna go about forty-seven, right? Ten point six inches? Really? That's it? Dang, on the fold, huh? You guys, 20 and 21 inches for a 51 inch waist? Even if we round that up to 11 inches on the fold, <laughs> that has to go around my waist? So 22 inches. Let me give you perspective. So this, um, so the pattern measures um, 26 on the fold, right? So 26 on the fold, 18. Okay, so this is this is 26 inches. And we'll say 11 inches. This has to this has to stretch to there. Yeah. That's tiny. Maybe the waistband's in here. No. Let's see what they say. Yeah, it let me when you, if this is to scale, if this is to scale, this is the back and this is the waistband. On the fold, on the fold which leaves a whole width of the front to sew to that. Unless you cut two, is it cut two? It's cut two, isn't it? Is it cut two, you guys? 
Yeah, there's two of them. That's why, you guys. It's cut too. <laughs> Sorry, I was misunderstanding that to be cut one. <laughs> All right, so I did pretty good. So they say, uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I cut two. Okay. <laughs> so it's, um, 44 inches and I made mine 48. Okay, that's reasonable. I can I can live with that. <laughs> oh man, you guys. Um so um what did you say 40 Okay, so that would be like right here. So yeah, we'll we'll just cut we'll cut off a little bit of this. This wasn't the piece I was using anyway. I was going to do 48. So we'll, we'll we'll try we'll try like 46. I don't want mine to stretch too much. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll do this about right here. <laughs> Together we will get there. What do you mean I'm so good? <laughs> I thought I was failing there, Megan. <laughs> All right, I have the neck band. I have the cuff, the waistband. I have the front and the back, correct? What's this? This is scrap, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if you're thinking I'm good because I figured out it was cut too. Uh, I forget that that's what they would do. They wouldn't do that in the, in the, in the, in production. They would do a cut one. Um, I forget that there would be side seams. That's so funny. Look at how much fabric I have here. Holy, holy moly. I actually searched this fabric. This is back when I was being a really responsible streamer and trying to be a good example and being like, I, I surge my fabrics before I put them in the washing machine. Um, I will sometimes, but lately I have been slacking on that and our laundry shows for it because then it's like this big old mess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, where did I put it, Karen? <laughs> it's over there somewhere, isn't it? It's it's over there, huh? <laughs> You're keeping us in suspense. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fold this along here to get my sleeves. I'm gonna use the least amount of fabric as possible. French terry so hard to see the grain line on. It always looks um, a little bit off. It's over there, yeah. I know it's over here somewhere. I just don't see it. It's probably like hung up on a cord back there. Is that fabric in with the tube? What does that mean? I can kind of see the green line. Do this and see what happens. See, that looks really off grain. See, for me, this looks on the grain right here. What does that mean, Louise? Is that just an um, autocorrect thing? So remember, you always have your selvage to compare your um, grain line to, if you can see it. I put it over there. I put it over here. Where the heck did that go? The air conditioner probably made it sail away. Oh well. Bye, Louise. Good night. Sleep well. All right. So if I look at my green line, this is nice. My selvage is nice and flat. <laughs> it's more like that. And so if I make my selvage uh, parallel to my fold line here, 
that'll keep it on green too. So let's make this a little bit narrow so it's a little easier for me to keep track of. You're going to Melinda Knight. I'm almost done. It's my last pattern piece, so you won't miss anything. You, you've seen me cut a sleeve before. <laughs> what time is it? Anyway. Oh, okay, cool. My mom asked me to go sofa shopping with her today. I'm kind of excited. I haven't seen her in a few weeks because they were visiting my sister up in Washington. I'm uh, so decisive though. I'm the worst person to bring shopping. I'm like, this doesn't work. <laughs> or this works. Let's go. I'm done. <laughs> That's probably why she's bringing me. But um, at the same time, she thinks of everything. So a little over 18. I don't like, t French Terry's notoriously will torque on you and switch and uh, and like uh, do all kinds of kooky stuff. So I, I really don't want to, to uh, have that happen. My parents are doing pretty good. Um, their house has turned out really great. They had to put a lot of work into it. There was just nothing to buy here after the fire. I had a really great talk with the guy who came and um, did a quote on our trees today because we need to have some of our trees trimmed, especially this one over our pool. We have a pool we don't use. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's been a drought here in California. And then so, you know, like watering your lawn was not a good thing. But here's the weird thing. Like we have... Um, we have all natives in our front yard, like um, all California native plants, and it turned out beautiful. It looks really nice. And we have drip irrigation because they still need some water. Drought tolerant doesn't mean they cannot have any water, right? Our backyard isn't set up like that yet, and so we've just let it go. Um, and uh, because we have a pool also, we need to watch our water consumption because it just evaporates in the heat right now. And so... Um, uh, you know, so we were having some trees taken out and he was just saying, you know, like, you know, if we watered your lawn, which would still be alive, all your trees would be okay. And they're, they're kind of, they're kind of struggling. But then we talked a lot about like the tree removal that needs to happen up in paradise and Megalia. And, um, and that he had been on, a, he had been a wild line, wild, uh, land firefighter before. Um, and he, he said, you know, he was like, you know, there's, even if there were no trees up there, there would have there they would have lost everything still you know it didn't matter you know so um and um yeah i don't know we just had a lot of really interesting things you know when you when you're you're not the person who lost something in the fire it's hard to find people to talk to about it because in a way you kind of have like for me i kind of have that survivor's guilt thing you know and there's a there was it's such a struggle for people here still. Um, and it makes me really appreciate like what the people in like tornado areas and hurricane areas are going through, you know? And right now they're saying our fire season is really off to a slow start. But the thing is that fire happened in November, you guys. It's August. So I don't know why they're saying it's off to a slow start. I'm like, uh, it's not even peak fire season really, you know? So, um, um, my parents, you know, uh, they are still grappling with the fact that they have to live down here, down here, meaning like um, in Chico area. And it's a lot hotter here, in their opinion. The heat feels different here. Where there they had all these trees and they lived in the forest and it was it, ostensibly it seemed like they lived in the mountains because they were a little bit at elevation and surrounded by beautiful trees and they had a, a little creek bed at the base of their property. They were still in like a neighborhood and everything, but it was just really wooded. Bears and deer and everything came there, you know. So, um, so I think like it was really great for them to get away and get away from the heat and go to Washington and because it's been a heat wave everywhere on the on the west coast um visiting the coast is actually weirdly it's gorgeous beautiful and sunny if that's not good for the coast and it's a really false way to see how the coast can be because you then you fall in love with it and you're like i want to live here you don't realize usually it's 
foggy most of the time, especially in the summer. <laughs> but um, they had a really great visit and then they drove down the coast all the way down um, to Humboldt County and then came over which is gorgeous like Washington down there I mean what an incredible drive I haven't seen that I've only seen the coast between there's a road you can take from Oregon coast straight to Portland that I've done the coast all the way up to there but I haven't done it above so that's pretty cool yeah it was cooler and it's a drier heat here it was a little yeah, I don't know, just, you know, like the, so many trees there really made a big difference. Oh, right, exactly, Eileen. Yeah, I just don't think it's ever going to be the same, you know. So, but they, their home is um, the old, the um, original farmhouse for the land all surrounding them, which is all developed now, like, right, there's houses, apartment buildings, businesses, whatever. But their house was the original farmhouse, which is funny because ours was too, but theirs is way cuter and way quirkier and has all these really great details. And my mom's redone the floors and all these things that I didn't even think about redoing. And it's really changed it. But what's really cool in their backyard, they have all these citrus trees, fully developed citrus trees, great grapefruit, lemon, lime. They have um, grapes that are just huge clusters of grapes on these vines um and orange tree and then um uh they are there are two like kind of like gazebos in the backyard but they're really well established like full-on roofs peaked roofs and everything but like square shaped so not gazebo like rounded with the bench inside and sides it's just like open it's like a like a patio cover two independent patio covers with fan there's like a built-in fan and electricity in them it's really cool so you can tell the people had been there a long time. They knew it worked for their little plot of land. It's kind of a big, um, yeah, right, Megan? Yeah. You live, You want to live somewhere hot and dry, Nancy? You can come visit me. <laughs> There's rooms and hotels now. <laughs> there wasn't for a long time, but now there are. So um, it's hot and dry here. I kind of would like, I would like a little less heat only because I would like to be outdoors more during the summer. I do notice, I am being more honest with myself, like you aren't spending as much time outside. It's really hard to walk our dogs because it's just too hot. If you do it in the evening, the ground is too hot for them um, and that all that heat is coming off because they're only this far off the ground, right? So they're like getting like cooked down there, especially our little pug pug, so. All right, so let's see what we got here. But, but thanks for asking, you know. My parents are doing pretty good considering, you know. All right, what is this? This is scrap. That's my neck band and my cuffs. Okay, cool. We've got unicorns. And then we have a piece of scrap. This one. All right, waistband, neck band. Okay, we're good here for our linden. Scrap, scrap. We have our Moneta. Okay. I'll put that there and I'll put this here. And then I want to show you this week's giveaway. So, yeah, they need shoes, exactly. But considering getting their collars on is enough work, <laughs> I hope I can get four things. So, I know today this week's giveaway looks small in size but it's packed with really great goodies. So I have the Sasha trousers pattern for you by Closet Case Patterns. Trouser, not jeans, really classy looking trousers. I have this pattern too, I'm gonna make it. I should use my pool, Nancy, you are right. We didn't do a pocket for a hoodie. Oh, did you want a pocket? pocket? We could do a pocket, a kangaroo style. I'd be totally down for that. Which On which one, Megan? The blue one or the unicorns? <laughs> okay, and I ha I've i got the um, tape I've been using. I'm having fun with this. I have a little kit to do rivets and jean style snaps if you are going to make jeans. This is kind of like the theme of pants here. I have a seam ripper by Clover, the kind I use. I really love this style. 
I have an enamel pin from Hearts Fabric, a little tomato, a little plump guy. Some really nice uh, Microtech Sharp Needles, perfect for top stitching and doing really nice uh, stitching work. And then I have a Chicken Boots Notions case, very magical one with unicorns on it in rainbow print fabric. So this week, um, I had a whole thing of what I wanted to do. Now I can't think of what it is. That would be cute in a white one, white color on the blue, really? Yeah, I think so too, Nancy. Oh, it's humid there, Nancy. Oh, yeah. I don't like humidity. Night, Claire. Thanks for coming. Thanks for all the tips, Claire, and the measurements. Really appreciate that. So, um, so this week, um, how about you tell me what is your biggest, most intimidating sewing goal you would like to um, accomplish or if you've recently accomplished it or you have let us know what it is you either your I either want to know your greatest triumph sewing wise or I want to know what you're aspiring to do sewing wise and so the giveaway is open through the end of this week I think this is valued at about 85 or 90 dollars um, I can't remember um, and um, you just need to comment in the video of one of the videos this week, not in the comment section, but in the video um, comments section below it once it's posted. Like and subscribe, and I will pick a winner on Sunday. So you have through midnight on Saturday Pacific time. And I think this Saturday is the 24th. So through the 24th, it should, should say in the comment section or the description of the video. So um, this is the third in our giveaway for my year celebration um, for being a live streamer. I'm still working on it and trying to figure it out and how to do this. Um, so I really appreciate all your support and you guys chiming in and helping me out and being here. It's been awesome. I'm really loving it. So, um, and if you want to support me, I'm on Patreon as So So Live. Any little bit helps. You don't have to do a monthly donation. You can just do a little flat mount. It has that option when you go to checkout. I really appreciate all my Patreon subscribers and um, patrons. Um, awesome. It's just, it just feels so good, and I really appreciate that, you guys. So, um, <laughs> as a, a subscription box, Nancy, I don't know. I kind of agonize over putting these giveaways together. Like the next one, I'm like, okay, okay. Are they about the same, you know, like to just go together because I kind of don't, I don't, I don't want to force the box to look more cohesive in, in, um, and sacrifice, like putting something in there. I'm not really behind. <laughs> I only want to give you guys things that I'm fully behind, you know? And things that I find are really useful and that you would get some use out of as well. So so thank you so much for being here. Um, if you're new to the stream, my name is Sarah Me, and I stream live on Twitch and YouTube. And we're usually here um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific. But this week um, we're here today through Saturday. And the next week will be, I think, back to normal schedule. It's going to be crazy, you guys, being back to normal schedule. My, the, okay, so Eliza, my husband just finally got to start working or using the shirt yesterday, but it's awesome. It's kind of a heavier weight, kind of an open weave, heavier weight. You want today's fabrics, Megan? <laughs> you can call Honey Run and get them, <laughs> except for the, the, um, these two. I think you can call um, uh, Hearts for these two. This one might be Stone Mountain and Daughter. Don't get me wrong there. I'm not sure. Sorry, I can't remember that one. It's either Stone Mountain and Daughter or Hearts. This one's for sure Hearts, and it comes in a lot of amazing colors. And it's called um, like, like uh, Tavona or something like that. It, she she saw it on Saturday's stream, and she said what it was. But you can ask for Lexi at Hearts, and she'll tell you. And then the others um, are the this unicorn sweatshirt fleece, and then I'm not sure what this is, but they can always I can always tell them Topaz. Thank you, Eliza. Topaz, Tavona, I don't know where I got that. <laughs> so anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific. I always feel like I have to say that. So thank you for coming from around the world. I really appreciate it in my little hot area of um, California here. Cool. All right, well, have a fantastic day, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. And um, 
I can't wait to sew these with you. We're gonna sew on with knits on the serger. Yay! All right, see you guys later. Bye.